my God, there's so much to talk about. But I feel like um, we should get started and we need to start with Lauren and Orion. But I want to go over what happened because like not everybody has watched the show. So I want to make sure everybody's on the same page so that we can dish. OK, so let me just give you a summary. And I've made some notes here. So please don't mind me while I'm reading my notes. And I see you guys, Houston. Happy to join Mary. OK, so it started off with Lauren and Orion. Oh, wait, I got pictures. Hold on. You know me and I love my pictures. One moment, please, while I get myself together. Hold on, because I want to share my pictures. And we want to go to this one. OK. All right, so they're at dinner. So Lauren and Orion are having their dinner conversation. And so Lauren asked, um, asked Orion, like, how did he feel about her having sex two, sex two months ago? Like, how did that make him feel? And he said, well, being honest, it kind of took sex off the table for me. So when she asked why, is that the reason sex is off the table? He said, well, that's not the reason. We're still getting to know each other. And he doesn't want sex to be something they just like check off a list on their marriage. So now he's changing his tune as to why he took sex off the table. And so Lauren very calmly, I uh, might add, explained that if he's not aware of his flip flopping, that she would very much appreciate a quiet meal. And so she's just like, you know, I'm going to eat my ribs. I'm going to eat my salad and just be quiet. Mm -hmm. Shut up. But he couldn't have it that way. So he kept pressing her to talk about it because they need to figure it out in his mind. And she agreed that they need to talk about it, but asked, why does it have to be right now? I don't have the mental capacity to have this conversation that is going nowhere in this moment. So shut up. OK, she didn't say that part. You know, I got to add a little flavor. But why? And then so he's like, well, why? Why not right now? Sorry, I want to change my pictures. Oop. There we go. So he's just like, so why not right now? She's like, because I don't feel safe. So she's crying and he seems completely unmoved by her tears. Right. And he's just like, well, I'm sorry if I if if you felt that I was pressing something. And she said, well, well, she cut him off like I don't need an I'm sorry. I felt apology. And, you know, damn well that that is not the kind of apology that you give someone. You are more mature than that guy. So I, I don't need I'm sorry I felt. And then he said, well, I guess I have nothing else to say. So this is that was part one of their situation. And the problem with Orion right now is that he is lying. He is not being honest about his feelings. So Lauren is frustrated because she can't have a real conversation with him because he straight up told her in her face that, well, this you having sex two months ago makes me take sex off the table. And then two seconds later, he's just like, well, they'll, no, no. Why would you think I said that um, I took sex off the table is because you had sex two months ago. That's that's not what I said. <laughs> he is flip flopping. He is gaslighting her. He is gaslight. Speaking of his community, he gaslight his old compute, his old community when it comes to that. Let me see. What are you guys saying over here? He went from being mad about what she said to shaming her for her past and then back to what she said. Yes, he, he is flip-flopping, which is why she's so freaking frustrated. Because it's just like, what is it? You mad about the community? You mad about the sex? You mad about my hair? Are we still bonnet buddies? That's what I want to know. Are they still bonnet buddies? <laughs> yeah, he is kind of being a, a, a Karen, isn't he? Because he just feels like he has to call her out on everything. Like, everything doesn't have to be so heavy. You know, you can call her out on stuff, but can you just call her out and then just keep going like does everything have to be such a heavy conversation but they got off on that foot though of having such heavy conversation like they you know like she asked if he's ever said the n-word they're having like deep conversations about sexual positions like can we have a conversation about like what's your favorite flavor of gum 
you know, like what what restaurant do you prefer McDonald's or Carl's Jr.? You know, can we have some lighter conversation between these two? These two got so heavy, so fat. I don't recall them having like just fun, normal conversations. I'm like searching my mind right now, trying to remember if they've ever had like a fun conversation. It's all been about culture, whether it be black culture, indigenous culture, cat culture. All I don't know. It's too much. Experts should know that they are getting in what they are getting into. Wait, experts should know what they are getting into before they dispense advice. Jumping into chaos situations blindly. Uh, are they not watching these shows? So actually, they're not watching the show because it hasn't been edited yet. So the experts are getting their information from the producers. So each couple has their own set of producers. So their producers are filling Pastor Cal, um, Dr. Pia, and um, we haven't seen the other one. Uh, what, what am I forgetting her name? The little smidget. Anyway, um, Dr. Ruth. No, what is her name? Oh my God, why am I blinking on her name? Pepper. I call her Dr. Ruth. Where'd that come from? I'm showing my age. But anyway, so they're getting uh, their information from the producers. They're not actually seeing it play out. They're seeing it play out actually probably when we're seeing it play out because, you know, they have it takes a long time to edit these shows. Um, no, they weren't having any fun. Like, I don't I try to remember, like, during this whole like, what is it? Five days, six days of their I think it's five days of their honeymoon. Have they had any fun? Have they gone on an excursion? They were in the cenotes, but they were still downloading on what was going on um, about the comments she made in the hot tub. Like, I, I can't I can't recall them doing anything that has been fun. They didn't seem to get the concept of a honeymoon, lack of fun, everything. So right. Like, I can't think of what did, did they do anything fun? I don't think they did. Ryan is not Lauren, worth Lauren's time. He's weird and he's not into Lauren. She needs to cut her losses and find somebody with no baggage and Hinnan go back. Oh, he needs to go back to his culture. <laughs> yeah, what's interesting is as much as he's into his culture, remember he said he's not into women that are of his culture. So I think that's kind of interesting because as much as he's into his culture, it kind of feels like he probably needs to date someone who is, whoa, what is going on in here? Wow, Scott Stock Due Diligence. Wow, thank you so much. I'm also a YouTube creator, but Nav's, not Mavs content. I've been watching the show from season one. Well, thank you so much for your generous donation, Scott. Thank you so much. And welcome to the Mavs family. Um, season one is definitely a good one to start with, with Jamie and her reaction. That is still um, like one of the top moments of this series of Married at First Sight. But thank you so much, Scott. I really appreciate that. That's super generous. Uh, that might be the last season I watch. If they're if these are experts putting them together, they don't do a very good job. Now I know I give the experts a hard time, and I'll get back to Lauren and Ryan and all their situation throughout the day because child, I will go on a tangent apparently. Um, but you have to think about this is the dating pool. I mean, like if the dating pool was all that great, everybody would be married and bo booed up, right? Like everyone would have like 19 different options and be like, I can't pick. Everybody's so fantastic. But the dating pool is filled with a lot of damaged people, may I say, and people who don't have their act together, people who haven't um, still healed from their past, uh, people who um, are maybe bitter about their last relationship. So they're taking it out on everybody they meet since people who lie about stupid things, you know, whether it be their height, their weight, where they live, their financial situation. I mean, that's the dating pool, unfortunately. And then when you think about what the dating pool is, and then you make it even smaller based on the amount of people who are willing to do the show, then that, that's even a smaller pool of people. And then when they kind of then weed out the obvious fools, then that even makes it even smaller. You know what I'm saying? So even though I, I like to give the, the experts a hard time, it is this is a difficult show to cast. And at the end of the day, I guess they really are marrying them for our entertainment purposes. And it is entertaining or else I wouldn't be here, right? <laughs> Oh, thank you, Mindy. I do like Tamara's coverage. Thank you. Yes, 
Thank you, TM-10. There is definitely a lot of pee in the dating pool. So, and so they're just trying to wipe these, the pee off of some of these people and be like, okay, you don't, you don't smell that bad. <laughs> Let's throw you on our show. <laughs> All right. So let me keep going on uh, what happened between these two, because otherwise I will definitely go um, on and on talking to you guys um, about random things. Okay. So later in the bed, let me pull that up when they were in the bed. So here um, he said, I'm really curious if you felt like sex was off the table because you had sex two months ago. And she said, yes, I feel that way because that's what you said. And he's like, well, it's not off the table because of that. And so she's just like, then why did you say that? Stand on what you said. So he started to apologize and she interrupted him and said, mm -mm, I don't want an apology. I want to know why you said that. So he's like, well, I said it because, well, because, mm, it's kind of the truth. And she's like, there it is. There it is. So they were going back. So she's like, stand on that. That's, there it is. That's your truth. So they were going back and forth on, um, uh, well, let's see, going back and forth with Orion saying things like, well, you were engaged. And she's like, oh, I was engaged before I got picked to be on the show. Like, like 10,000 people applied to be on the show. Did everybody supposed to stop having sex? We would have shut down the city. <laughs> but not only that, you know, like, I don't, I wish they would have told us what the situation was, why she had sex or who she had sex with, because like, was this a potential prospect? Because this is like, if you sign up for this show, you just kind of throw in your hat in the ring, but you still may be dating because what if you do have an opportunity to meet somebody who's great? So was this like a third date with somebody and things were going good? And she thought maybe she'd, you know, be in a relationship with them and wouldn't need the show. Like, I wish they would have given more context to her sexual situation so that we can judge her more. Ha! Just kidding. Not really. Okay. Um, so he's, <laughs> she, so they're going back and forth and she's like saying, well, you're assuming that I didn't take this process as serious as you. And he's like, no, I'm not assuming that, but it made me uncomfortable that you're having sex after you were signed up for the process. And so she's like, so you think my intentions aren't as pure as yours? And he's like, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you're a hoe. Okay. No, he didn't say that part. But she's just like, your truth is your truth. And that's all you have at the end of the day. So stand on your truth. So again, Orion is flip flop flopping and he's gaslighting her because basically saying like, why would you think that I would take sex off the table when you told me that you had sex two months ago? And she's like, well, because that is what you said. And that is what he said. You know, like he said that, after, you know, after hearing that situation, that that makes him take sex off the table. So now he's back. Now he's back flopping on that. Uh, she couldn't tell him anything because he had already made up his mind. Yeah, this is definitely more to do with him than it does with her because he's not being honest about the situation. Um, you know, as we move forward through this show and he talks with Dr. Pia and he talks with Pastor Cal, he admits that he has not forgiven her for what she said in the, in the hot tub. But that hot tub situation, I feel like, and just even based on what he's been saying on After Party, I feel like he feels like that he needs to punish her for the entire Navajo indigenous community. Like he is the representation of his community because there's not a lot of indigenous representation on television. So I feel like he's putting that weight on his shoulder. And now it's just like, okay, this has been something that's been swirling around in our community for all these decades, years, hundreds or whatever. And so let's make her pay for whatever, you know, all of this pain that has been caused to our community. Like it's a, an incumbent on me to shoulder this burden for the world, for my community. And I think he's gone way too far. He's gone way too far with that. He has low self-esteem. Yeah, because if he had more self-esteem, then he wouldn't be so concerned about what his community is going to think and what his mom is going to think. Because when you're when you're dating somebody and you're feeling strong about it and your community or your family is not feeling it, if and if it's not a valid reason that they're not feeling it, then it's just like, you know what? This is my person. 
deal with them, embrace them. He said he had no malicious in intent. He said, he, she said she had no malicious intent. I think it says more about him. Yes, and because also let's keep in mind that he said that he said the N word as well. So he said derogatory things, but the difference is she said it on camera. I think if he would, if she would have, if they would have had that exchange off camera, this would have been a completely different situation. But because it was captured on camera, he feels like he needs to react in a certain kind of way for his people and his for community, but he doesn't know how to react, but it's not incumbent on him. Like, just be true to yourself. I don't know. He gets on my nerves. I can't imagine how he's abused, how, how he's abused the white women he's dated, probably guilt trip them every day. Yeah. I, if you don't know his culture, you're in for a real treat because <laughs> he is no joke. The hot tub situation, I felt he wanted to throw every black slur epithet at Lauren, but cameras were there. I think that it I think that it was what he meant then when telling Pastor Cal he didn't get to say everything. Mm, you might be onto something there. <laughs> you might be onto something there. Um, you know, when he said that, he said that he meant that, you know, he didn't tell her that he just felt like uh she offended everybody you know she offended my fam she offended me she offended my family she offended my community the whole entire indigenous community my dog the flower bed the land i mean she just uh, yeah he he took that too far i think yeah exactly what about what he said he said, I mean, because he has been no angel in this between, you know, judging her over the sex and him saying the N word. I mean, we all I mean, imagine if cameras were rolling at all times, all the things that we could be, you know, we all say crazy stuff when the cameras aren't rolling. Just imagine if the cameras were rolling when you said some of the things that you said, whether it's to your friend, your husband, your your girlfriend. Um, how canceled you would be or how fired you would be. You know what I mean? So that's where the grace comes in because we all say stupid stuff. We all make mistakes. We all make stupid mistakes too. You know, some of them are dumber and maybe even offensive than the other, but that's where the grace comes in. And she's been giving him a lot of grace throughout this entire episode. She kept giving him grace. Like, okay, well, you weren't your best self. And also this wording, like, I don't even think I could date in today's society. Maybe it's just this age group because I don't have the vocabulary, <laughs> the way they talk to each other. I, anyway, let me keep going. <laughs> Yo, she's a minority too. He let Cameron slide with the, re with the reservation comment. She didn't even say the word. He did. I know. She's a minority too. And he seems to keep forgetting that. Like, his minority-ness is more than hers. Like, it's not a competition. You know, I think he is overwhelmed by it all because I feel like, like I was mentioning earlier, that he feels like he has to respond for the entire indigenous community. And, you know, that's with cameras in his face. He's got producers, I'm sure they're all in his ear trying to tell him how he needs to navigate this as well. And then he's got Lauren in there, like, still asking, are we still bonded buddies or what? So it's a lot. Doing the show, even without all this cultural mess, is hard and stressful. So you add this culture of stuff onto it and trying to use the right words. And they spend 30 minutes having a four-minute conversation because they're sitting up there trying to pick their words. Oh, I can't do it. Yeah, even if he is overwhelmed, he definitely doubled down. He's like, I said what I said, and I feel what I feel. You're canceled, Lauren. I can't get past it. He doesn't know what grace means. She needs to run far and fast away from him. He definitely doesn't know how to give grace. He has not. I don't I can't recall him giving her grace and meaning it. I, I'm trying to think of a situation where he really gave her grace and meant it because I don't think he has. Yeah, that's true. Cameron didn't even apologize for what he said. Did he? Did he apologize? I don't think he did. I think he just laughed because he thought it was funny. Like, I'm hilarious. Thank you. Um, I feel like Orion looked more like his mother. I don't think she would have drawn a parallel between his sunburn and the RS slur. Lauren said she hadn't known the word or what it meant. Yeah, I think that 
Lawrence, wait, I don't think she would have drawn a parallel between his sunburn and the, well, this never would have come up if he hadn't even said the word because she didn't even that wasn't even in her mind when you think and when I think of racial uh, epithets or ways to insult people in a cultural way. Actually, that doesn't come to mind what he said. He's the one that brought it up. Uh, even though she brought up the N word, he brought up the R word, I guess, if you will. <laughs> Lauren could say the same about her culture. He just can't get over uh, get over with her because it would dev devolve, devolve into the oppression Olympics. <laughs> exactly, exactly. He cannot. I don't know. These these two are too deep into this whole ethnic conversation, and I feel at some point somebody needed to say, "Stop." You know, like stop talk about the weather, go on a boat ride and just like loosen up, like, come on, like have stretch, go to yoga or something. She worked out, but then she came back just as tense as before. Cameron pursed his lips. I could tell he was kind of embarrassed, but he didn't apologize. I wonder if Cameron's one of those guys who doesn't apologize anyway, or people, I'm not going to say um, it's a guy thing, but you know, some people just don't apologize. They just kind of give you the wink and the nod, like, you know I'm sorry, right? He does his community. He does his community feel about how does this community feel about him discussing the girth of? Thank you, the girth of his member on TV. And I brought that up last week in terms of you know he's sitting up there being like holier than thou, and in the meantime he was sitting up. I mean that was probably one of the most embarrassing things that have been done this particular season to me was him talking about his girth certificate, but what do I know? Uh, Leslie says the indigenous people have been here longer than the black people. We should know what not to call them. If he said the N word, you would be, you would all be screaming. Oh, absolutely. But well, he did say he'd said the N word. Um, so, but I don't think anybody was screaming at that. I think we were noting it. Um, but he said the R word um, when she brought that up, but I'm actually not taking sides when it comes to him being insulted by what she said. What I have a problem with him is giving grace and then saying he's not giving grace and then saying he is giving grace, but well, not really. So if you're basically their relationship ended in that moment and he should have just said that, you know, the moment she made that what she called it a joke. I don't think it was a joke. It wasn't funny. She said, was, she made, you know, that reference about his face when they were in the hot tub and he was done with her right then. And all of this other stuff that he's doing and kind of, you know, like, I, I think one of the reasons he was up, upset about the two month thing is because he's trying to find a way to get out of this situation because he was done. He was done with that mo in that moment. I think he was turned off by her in that moment. But he didn't he didn't know how to push stop because they are getting a lot of pressure from the producers to keep going and, you know, to get over these situations. So I really I'm I'm not weighing in on whether or not he should have been offended or his people should be offended. My thing is, is that if you're offended to the point of being turned off, just say that in that moment and then move from there. Don't lie and say that it isn't offensive. Know what I'm saying? Or his inability to forgive. Inability to date women who give birth to his community. Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah. I, even, you know, I, I feel like in this situation, he can still forgive her for saying it because she did apologize up and down. But he doesn't have to forget and he doesn't have to move forward. But there is something in being able to forgive somebody because you can tell that she is genuinely sorry. I think I, I don't know if I've seen anybody apologize so many different ways and finding so many different words to be able to apologize for something that was wrong. I mean, she even went as far as like Googling uh, the terminology for the indigenous and um, Navajo community, whether it be good or bad, like she's trying to educate herself like I wouldn't have even thought of that. You know what I'm saying? So just being able to forgive and he can still forgive and be like, peace out, though. Like, I forgive you, but I can't forget. I can't let it go. Those are two, you know, those two different things. Dr. Cal appeared 
appeared put off um, it all with it all and got right to addressing the issue. Do you want a divorce? Yeah, because Dr. Dr. Cal, Pastor Cal was at like Costco trying to get his 30 pounds of cheese. And he was just like, because he was in the car, you know what I said? I don't know where he was on his way to, but I think he was in the Costco parking lot. And he's just like, look, I got 10 minutes before they close. Y'all want a divorce or not? What's up? That's what I think was going on. <laughs> Let's go back and see. Let me change. I got a lot of pictures in here. Y'all know I like the pictures. They talked to Pia. Oh, yeah. And then there was this dinner situation. She looked definitely disturbed and pissed off during this dinner. Did y'all catch her face during this dinner situation? Um, after party, she said that she was sitting there looking that way is because when he asked to take a break, uh, she, he took his ring off. So he actually set that precedent of taking the ring off in the relationship. Now, later she got mad and yelled at him and said she wanted a divorce and took the ring off. But he had taken it off more than once prior to her saying that. Um, let's see what else. We all people are not raised in communities with indigenous people. We should excuse her. After all, he said the term. Yeah. And that was, you know, that was a teachable moment. And that's what I thought he was going to do with that. You know, because he did say, you know, like, well, do you even know what that term means? And I'm like, OK, cool. Turn this into a teachable moment, like teach everybody why that is um, a big deal for your community. And he taught her and he's still teaching her like mm -mm, I, I told you, but I'm, I'm going to show you better than I can tell you. I don't know. I, um, I don't know. I feel like it would have been worse if it wasn't caught on camera. He would have twisted her words around something he's done with uh, um, when on camera. So glad it was. that's true. Um, I don't know, though. It's it's hard. To, it's hard to know because I because even when he was on after party after this happened, he said he wasn't sure how to respond. And I feel like he didn't know how to respond because the whole world was watching. You know what I'm saying? So when you're just one on one you know how to respond because you just respond with your true feelings. But yeah, that's a hard one to know, but you do make a good point. Uh, relaxed library. He should have been, he should have been real from jump and said he was finding it hard to get past instead of acting like everything. Exactly. Because that's what they should have been working on throughout this whole honeymoon. If they were going to have these deep conversations of, about this whole tub situation and what was said, the hot tub situation, rather than moving on. And meantime, he's bothered in the back of his head, which is probably why he was so sensitive to her saying that two months ago thing, because I think by, he was already turned off by her anyway. So you add that on top of, that, you know, him already being turned off and like, ooh, and you just had sex, Ugh, you know. Sounds like we all think the same thing about these two. Yeah, I think um, there's definitely a consensus. Red Indian met the red makeup they wore, showing the ignorance of the English. He's ignorant. Yeah, there's um, conflict online. I looked up the history of this, um, where that came from. And some say it was a red makeup. And some say that um, back in the day that they used to call themselves red skinned um, because they weren't quite black and they weren't quite white. And so they had red ish in their skin so they they felt like they were in the middle and so as time progressed um it it became you know um a negative term but then some people say it was because they put the red paint on their on their face so uh, the history isn't um a hundred percent on why but I, I couldn't find anything that said what he said where it was because they would scalp them in the red from the scalp i never saw anything about that but I only looked once, so maybe it's in somebody's history book that I didn't see. Yeah, I've never heard the Apple thing either, you know. Um, but then again, I haven't had, I don't know if I, I can't recall going to school with anybody who was indigenous to know that, you know what I mean, that they um, would have gotten called that. Um, so I don't know if that's specific to indigenous. I'm trying to think. I don't think I went to school with anybody to, with indigenous to to have heard that particular one. He didn't have his ring on after the after the episode with the derogatory term either. Pay attention. He was already done. Yes, I think he was done right after that hot tub situation. He is. He was just like lights out, cut, call it a wrap. This marriage is over. He was done. 
Yes, I've heard natives proudly holding this term. Yeah, so I don't know if it's a certain age group that, you know, doesn't have a hard time with it. I don't I don't even pretend to know, so I'm not I don't weigh in. If he was offended, he was offended. But again, it's not what happens to you, but it's how you respond. And again, he doesn't have to continue on with the marriage if he feels like it was so egregious, but uh, to forgive her for it, you know, like, I, I don't think there's anything wrong. I don't think his community would say that there's anything wrong with that now that she understands. And I think she's made it clear that she understands the depth of what she's done. You know, you can give grace. There's people who have given grace to people who have murdered their, you know, like murdered a family member and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that that needs to be done because I don't think I could. But, you know, you think about what people have given grace for. I think he could have given her grace for this. Do you think Lauren will get set up with the guy who got left at the altar? No, I don't think so. They don't usually do that. Not on purpose anyway. Have they done that? I know like Bao and um, what's his face? Now I'm for, I can see his face, but I can't remember his name. Um, got together, but they weren't put together like that. Yeah, I don't see that happening. I think the experts need to do a better job or maybe we need new experts. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, there's so many different ways that you can, that's a broad statement, do a better job at their advice, do a better job at matching people, do a better job at, um, you know, communicating. I mean, there's a lot of better jobs they could do, right? <laughs> I feel bad for Lauren. She needed and wanted a black man. They couldn't find her one. Yeah, I don't, I looked up the percentage of black people in Colorado and I don't remember what it was, but it was like one percent. It was, I mean, like one digit. I can't remember what the percentage of black people in Colorado was, but I want to say it was like maybe three or four percent is very small. And so you take that percentage and then of that, let's say it's four percent. How many of them are single and then how many of them want to be on the show and then how many of them. And then also I remember Pastor Cal saying years ago that a lot of the black men actually don't want to be paired with black women. So how many of the black men wanted a black woman? So now you got maybe two guys, you know, Daryl and Shaquan. Um, let me stop. <laughs> let me stop before I get myself in trouble. He never would have made her feel safe. No, because I, I feel like he's a punisher. I feel like if you do something to him, he feels like he has to punish you for it. You know, he took sex off the table. He's still punishing her for the hot tub situation. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like any mistake she makes. Uh, is going to be egregious in his mind. I've seen some spoilers. I won't say anything. Okay, yeah, don't say anything, Mindy. I think the production has a lot to do with the couples. Also, even if they say it is the expert. Oh, yeah, thousand percent. Thousand percent the production is really is between the producers and the experts. What I, The way I think it would go, just based on what I know about television, um, I have folks, I have a friend who's in television. I've been in television in the past. The producers whittle down all of the candidates um, to a certain number and then have the experts interview them. You know how they do those mass interviews where they're just like kind of like speed dating. And then from there, I think, I don't know if they have a scoring system or whatever, but then they whittle that down and then have the experts and they're working with them the whole time. But there's a whole system that it's a, it, it, sure, it's a group of people. I've actually even heard that the way they initially do it is have, is put their information, you know how they always say they have to fill out this 500 questionnaire or whatever. Um, what I've heard them say is they put those questionnaires in something like eHarmony um, like their algorithm where it can match people with similar, um, you know, answers or, you know, according to their algorithm. And so I think, you know, it can, like with eHarmony, I think it'll spit out something like, oh, these people are like a 93% match. These people are 83% match. So I've heard that, that that's what they've done. I heard that a long time ago. I haven't heard it recently, but I heard, and that makes sense because how would you know when you've got all of these different people I do believe that they probably throw it in some kind of computer program that will initially match everybody. And then from those matches, they, they do their party. They, they boogie. 
Um, the experts never match people based on important values like faith, religion, desire for children and lifestyles. They do that to create more drama. That's why the show has less. And yeah, that's one thing I don't understand that they do or don't do is that they ignore religion and um, politics and children and lifestyle, but I think it's really dangerous to do that. And the religion and politics in particular, especially in the climate, uh, political climate that we're in right now. Excuse me. But, you know, imagine if you, you're, you know, because they have no problem pairing opposites, you know, somebody who's ultra conservative with somebody who's ultra liberal. That's just, a, and if they're really both really into politics, so the one thing if you're, maybe conservative and you're liberal, but you're just like, whatever, I don't really follow politics. Yeah, maybe that's not such a big deal. But if they're both really into politics, you're just asking for, you're just cruising for a bruise. And hey, DC, Colorado is approximately 5% black and Denver approximately 10% black. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I can always count on DC refugee. What's up, dude? Um, I knew it was single digit. I knew it was super small and approximately 10% in Denver, which actually is higher than what I thought it was be, what it would be. I think that the show needs to expand. Instead of casting cities, they should do it different cities. They need to stop all the uh, conversations between couples. People moved just to be on the show. I, I think that's hard only because, you know, it's, it's hard to find people who are willing to move for, love. I mean, these people are already having a hard time just moving into the same apartment, you know, like in the same city, you know, like for these uh, shared apartments. That is an idea, kind of like Love is Blind kind of does that. And that seems to be a little bit more successful. But it's something to think about. They need to do something different. And then let's see, we'll take a couple more and then we'll move on to the other couples. I'm sorry, that man is going to say sex is off the table. A man who doesn't want you, that's who. Oh, I'm sorry. What man is going to say sex is off the table? A man who doesn't want you, man who doesn't want you. That's who. Even if abstaining, no man is going to say the words off the table. <laughs> that's true. That's pretty true. Because usually a man will be just like, you know what, you I, and you gonna you gonna give it to me? I'm gonna take it. <laughs> that's not always, but if he the, based on where they were in their relationship. There's no reason why they had to take sex off the table unless he was done. They always seem to match couples that have at least one significant difference. And then, yeah, yeah, that's true. They do like, like, like everything matches except for she wants to have kids and he doesn't or vice versa. Or um, she wants to move to England and he doesn't or something. Yeah. So they do like to match for drama. Um but then the show is about the drama. And I think somewhere in the contract, it even says that these marriages are for entertainment purposes. So I, it's kind of like, and most people don't read contracts, but it's kind of like if your marriage works out, oh, good for you. But we're actually kind of matching you for entertainment. That doesn't surprise me. Is Dr. Pepper going to make an appearance or did she leave the show? I think she will be here. I just think they they pulled out every expert but her for this particular episode. But I think we will see her later. I think Dr. Pia and Pastor Cal weren't supposed to be here this soon. But because these two were so deep on the struggle bus that they had to dust both of them off and be like, OK, we need to throw the kitchen sink at these two. We need a sex expert. Plus, we need Jesus up in here. Let's get Pastor Cal. Let's see what we can do. And it's still not working. Let's see. I think Orion uh, would hold a grudge forever. Yeah, he does seem pretty grudge bound. Um, like he is, he cannot let this go, which he said. All right. So let's move on to, let's see. I think it's Emily and I have all these pictures. I always overdo it with the pictures. Emily and Brennan. So let me get my little notes out about what happened to them. Uh, okay. So, it, so he's actually, to me, Brennan is kind of a little bit uptight. Um, she seems, I, I actually not, I'm not really mad at Emily yet. You know, like, yeah, she's not, uh, doesn't have experience in terms of being in, in a relationship, but she actually seems pretty chill. Like she seems like a good girl. You know what I mean? In terms of just like, she's fine. She likes to party. 
She might be a little immature. Okay, now I'm naming all these things that are negative. But overall, though, she seems like she's like like kind of fun and easygoing and going with the flow so far. Um, let's see. He even complimented her. Yeah, he complimented her about being easygoing. Um, she was playing her game with <laughs> her playing the games, and she had she was holding the drink the whole time. Like I understand that her wrist was hurting, but <laughs> but it was never too sore to hold a margarita. <laughs> um, why is my Google beeping at me? Um, Lauren said that. Oh, so on after party they were talking about Brennan. Um, because you know, when, you know, Emily had mentioned to him, like, do you know how to have fun? And he got all offended at everything. So Lauren, um, Claire was saying on after party, she said that he is very defensive about nothing. He has a certain portrayal of himself and anything outside of that view is like, how dare you? And so Lauren said that he, that he can, like, she can see him, like his personality to like flip, like not kind of like a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but I almost think she's saying like a switch will go off on him and he will just flip on you. And then so Claire also said that he's more insulting off camera. Like he'll laugh at Emily and um, as if, as if what she's, oh, as if what she's saying is ridiculous and what she's saying is not ridiculous. He's just rude. So that's according to people who know him based on being on this show. And remember after party is taped after decision day. So they've had a nice little dose of who Brennan is at this point. So it's really interesting to hear them say that basically he's a jerk. <laughs> that's what I'm getting out of it. Brendan is really scary. I would run an intervention if I had a friend in a relationship with him. Yeah, I feel like there is definitely an undertone of some anger or something going on with him. Like there's some, there's definitely an un, uncomfortable energy that he is giving off and he's not being genuine. And I mentioned that earlier too. I felt like what he's saying on camera versus what he's saying behind the camera, I bet they are not lining up. Yeah, Brennan definitely has an ego, and I think he his ego is also affecting how he's perceived on television, and he's very aware of that on when the cameras are rolling. Um, but also, his e ego is really fragile. So when Emily made that little joke about like, "Do you know how to have fun?" Boom, his ego was just his ego. His little ego got a little crushed. I feel Emily is a little naive, but so willing to make it work, and he is acting like he is above her. Yes. It is infuriating. I think maybe he doesn't like to lose. Yes, I feel the same way that he does feel like um, he is above her, you know, like which even plays into what Claire said that, you know, like he kind of laughs at her, like when she's talking and she's not saying something ridiculous. So it it's it's kind of like giving like mean boy instead of, you know, mean girl. It's, it's kind of like giving mean boy kind of energy uh, what he's doing. Who was on After Party this week? It was, um, here, I'll show you because you know I have a million pictures. Hold on. Let me um, show you who was on After Party. It was... Da, 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 da. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have done it this way because I always have too many pictures. Is it such thing as too many pictures, though? Is that really a thing? Oops, let's go that way. So it was Claire, um, Lauren, and Kirsten from season 16. So it was nice to see Kirsten on there. She's looking all pretty and pretty fied. But this was after party for this week. Um, I could see him being too controlling. Yes, Brennan is definitely... Um, he's giving like he could be that and and he i feel like he's can he might be controlling in a way by his attitude you know like he may not be telling you what to do but by the way he responds to what you're doing you're like correcting yourself right you know it's just like okay he's giving me a look like i'm an idiot let me not do this Brennan doesn't respect Emily, although he may consider her fun to be around. Yeah, I think he just sees her as I, I went. First of all, I wouldn't be surprised if they had sex. I wouldn't be surprised if he's just like, you know what? I, I'm at this point. I'm just in it to play the game of being on the show. She's willing to give it up. Why not? Why? Why would I say no? But 
um, I definitely I'm not getting that he really has respect for her. And that's something that if you don't have respect for somebody, you're just going to go ahead and take it. Right. I don't know. I could be I could be wrong. But, you know, me, I like to uh, voice my opinion regardless. <laughs> Yes, he definitely comes across as having a chip on his shoulder and being cocky. Yeah, uptight like uh, Orion. And then we'll move on to the next couple too. After party seems to be male bashing and Keisha never hold the women accountable for their bad behavior. Um, I'm trying to think of what women this recently that did something that she didn't hold them accountable to because lately it's been kind of like a Orion show this season. So I'm, I'm, I can't think of an example of what you're saying, but you know, that does happen. Um, let me get back to my next couple, which would be, let's talk about, let's see, we got through with Emily and Brennan. Let's talk about Claire and sorry, somebody's blowing up my text. Let me just make sure everybody's okay here. Hold on. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so Claire and um Cameron. So Cameron woke up because his ear was hurting and Love your ensemble. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I saw a compliment. And all of a sudden, I had to stop. Somebody said they love my ensemble. Love the jury in here. Thank you, D. I'm so stupid. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so he woke up with a, uh, like something going on with his ear. He wasn't able to sleep. And so he's uh, thinking that he needs to go to the doctor. And Claire's like, go on and go. Um, I have a meeting. So take care of it. Um, and so then later, he goes to the doctor and um, finds out that that the doctor actually at the, he goes to the doctor at the resort, resort and the doctor wasn't qualified to really diagnose what was going on. So he was gonna need to go to a doctor in Cancun. And she's just like, well, I still got a meeting. Have fun, I hope it works out, bye. And then in the um, confessional, she's talking about, she's saying to the confessional, let me get this right. Um, I have a note. Do, 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 do. Did you think about the doctor? So to the professional camp, she's like, I know that he's in a lot of pain and I do feel uh, really <laughs> bad for him. I hope it works out. Like, so she was like laughing at the fact that he was feeling bad. Claire, come on now. You could do better. Now, how do you guys feel about the fact that she didn't go with him to the doctor? Because you know, in a normal situation, like if it was local, I wouldn't expect my significant other to come with me to every little doctor's appointment, especially if it's an ear thing that I have, like leave, you know, st you know, stop working, come with me to the doctor. However, they were in a different country where, in, uh, you know, that they were not speaking his first language. However, they are on a television show where producers were going to take him. So he was going to have somebody with him. Um, all the time. So what do you think? Do you think that he, that she should have gone with him to the doctor? Like, you know, even though she had that meeting or do you think what, you know, she did was fine. Just like gone and go. I hope all works out for you. What do you guys think? Well, Claire does, uh, does not know him and he is, um, <laughs> <laughs> he is at best a goofball. I would have not have sacrificed my job for him. That's true because that's another point too, because you don't know if this is going to work out. So do you risk getting a ding at your job for somebody that um, after eight weeks you may never see again? Uh, why was she working on her honeymoon? She should have gone, um, in my opinion. A lot of them seem to work on the honeymoon. I think um, some of them have a hard time just getting eight weeks off from their job. So I think they make arrangements with their job to like, you know, like maybe work, do a little bit uh, remote and, you know, uh, take, you know, day off or half days. Because this job, this show is very demanding when it comes to time. Cameron is quirky, but I definitely think the editors are involved. I think he is reacting maybe oddly, but still reaching to some of uh, reach react 
reacting to some of her behaviors. Yes, he should have gone. She should have gone with him. Yeah. You know, in the beginning, I was definitely hard on Cameron and he deserved it because he was kind of overreacting to the, um, I think, whatever behavior he was seeing out from her. But now that he's kind of calmed down, he does seem to be trying and he does seem to want to make this work. And he definitely is more attracted to her than what he's letting on to her anyway. Um, even now, you know, even in this episode, um, when he they were at the group dinner, he said something like, yeah, I think we can both agree that if we met at a bar, we would not be all over each other. Yeah, maybe you wouldn't be all over because you think she's out of your league. But if she came over to you, I don't think you would be kicking her to the side. I think, um, she, yeah, I, he's definitely way attracted to her uh totally this was a marriage test and she failed <laughs> okay so you think she should have gone let's see what else do you guys say claire and cameron both lack emotional intelligence she should have gone with them an opportunity to bond she should have gone especially when she was joking and laughing about him being sick that was cruel yeah that wasn't very nice nothing she could do to help we don't know the work situation, so I don't think anybody anything bad of her. That's true. That that part we don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know if she said it was a mandatory meeting. I don't know what that means, you know, in terms of like, could they have rescheduled it? He gave her a huge bouquet of beautiful roses. No, no peck on the cheek, at least, Claire. Um, yeah, that is true. He gave her like a memorial, like a casket spray, like the <laughs> Those flowers were like huge and they were leaving the next day. So I wonder what she did with all those flowers. Um, it's like he picked the whole orchard. Like, just give me 3000 roses and a couple of sunflowers, please. But yeah, she, I feel like Claire has just made a good friend. And actually it's not even a friend. I feel like Claire maybe sees him like coworker. I, feel, I get coworker energy from Claire when it comes to him, which is why I don't think she felt compelled to go with him to the doctor um, because it's just like, oh, he's just a coworker. What's the big deal? Because also remember when he was gone, she was in the room. Let's see somewhere. I have a picture of her. Yeah. Here. Like she was just like, Wee, he's gone. It's the first time I've had the room to myself. Bye. Peace out, Cameron. I hope you feel better though. Wee. Like she was having way too much fun with him not being in the room. I'm like, okay, Claire, you're a whole mess over there. Um, but she said the meeting was uh was during the first appointment, and when he said he needed to see someone else, she still has the meeting. Hmm, I think that was messed up that she didn't go. Yeah, I don't know what time her meeting was, but yeah, I guess she could have gone the first time because when he came out after the doctor's office you know, like seeing the local doctor, she hadn't had the meeting yet. So she could have gone with him at least the first time um, to talk to the doctor at the hotel. Good point, tea time. But what was the reason for he brought flowers for what did he do that need a forgiveness or whatever? It just seemed very strange and out of sorts. So he said that he got the flowers because um, they had been talking about um, not acts of kindness, but romance and um, things to endure each other to one another. So he brought the flowers as, you know, kind of like he said he was going back to basics and basically bringing flowers. So it was a nice gesture. It was a big gesture. Like if you didn't see the flowers, I do have them here. Where are they? Yeah. So that was a big bouquet. I think it was bigger than her. I don't know. I'm looking to the side when it's on the screen here. They really just met a few days ago. And since it was not life-threatening situation, I think it was okay that she didn't go. Uh, Claire is treating him like a client. <laughs> yes, she is, right? <laughs> Those flowers were hideous. Looked like he had snatched them from a balcony. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering. I'm like, are these maybe the hotel flowers and they were preparing for the holidays, like Christmas or something? And um, he grabbed one of their Christmas displays because that was a lot of flowers. Oh, sorry, I'm just wondering why I have 36 plays. That was a lot. Oops. Sorry. I have like 36 new text messages all of a sudden. Okay. It's the same people. 
I, I usually don't get that many text messages and all of a sudden they're blowing it up. Okay. So she keeps her therapy hat on too much. Leave it at the office. You're a wife too. That's true. And when they were even talking about going back uh, to, you know, like Co Colorado after this, and she was talking about, oh, I can't wait to get back to my routine. I think that's what I'm missing. He kind of had to remind her like, uh, excuse me, you's married now. Like, yo, routine about to change, boo. And she's like, oh, that's right. So I think she's forgetting that he's not her coworker and that he's not going to go home, you know, after this little Cancun moment, like that's your husband, boo boo. Like <laughs> you, you's married now. <laughs> yeah. He did go to the hospital. Um, after at first he went to the hotel doctor and then after, uh, that hotel doctor couldn't figure out what was going on with him. He ended up going to, uh, like a real doctor. I don't know if it was a hospital or a clinic, but um, he ended up going to a, a doctor like out in the city. Um, I wonder what Claire is like as a therapist. I can't see it. Yeah, I yeah, I hadn't actually even thought about that. She seemed pretty good with Lauren when Lauren was having her moment. Um, you know, when Lauren was crying over o Orion and um, they were talking, she seemed to give a good ear in that sense. But let's see. Let's move on to our final. Is it our final couple? That's only right. We talked about Claire. We talked about Emily. Let's talk about Becca and Austin. Let me um, bring up their photos. One moment, please. So Becca and Austin, I feel like they're always the same right now. But I'm a little nervous for them um, because... I feel like Austin is maybe hiding something like I feel like, you know, how there's he's like a nice guy. But sometimes when you're a nice guy, by not telling your the whole truth, you're kind of being mean. So I feel like there's some I don't know what it is, but I feel like there's something that Austin. I don't know if he doesn't like about Becca or the situation that he's in, that he's kind of holding back. Um um, Becca with, you know, the whole let's not talk about deep stuff right now. I kind of get that. But at the same time, I kind of don't that the fact that he's like fighting it so hard, like you can't at least talk about one thing kind of deep, you know, like because they are when you think about how much time they spend together, they're together all day, 24 hours, seven days uh, for, you know, a week. And so it's kind of hard to not talk about something deep. You know what I mean? Because it's this isn't like your normal vacation. Even if like you're with your spouse, you may still go downstairs and maybe go do something, you know, like on your own for a minute, whether it's going to the gift shop or something and, you know, hanging out for a few hours and then coming back. Like, no, these people are like chained at the hip for like 24 seven. I mean, and obviously in the case of Claire and Cameron, that wasn't the case, you know, because they had to go to the. Um, he had to go to the doctor. But for the most part, these people are chained at the hip. So to not have any deeper conversation than, you know, like I like hats, you know, I like blue. Um, that actually feels like more work than it is to not just say something, you know, to have a conversation. Um, I agree. Austin is going to be to disappoint us soon. I can't I can see. A, yeah, right. I don't. I don't know what it is, but I feel like there's something that he's holding back. Um, I don't know if he is bothered. Like, I, I don't know if he's not bothered by the fact that she's sick, but at the same time, he may be like, but that's not for me. Like, I get it. I'll work with you, but eh, not really what I'm, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Austin is a kick, uh, a kick the can down the road and live for the moment guy. We'll start to see what is or isn't important to him at some point. 100%, but I feel like he's already identified some things that are important to him that maybe she doesn't have or she can't give or she's asking and he's not something. I don't know. I just feel like something, there's something coming down the pike between these two. I don't think it'll be ugly because I don't think he's a mean guy. Like, I think it will come up in a way that's not mean, but it'll be real. Becca is so pretty and seems so nice. Not crazy about the guy, though, for some reason, why is he always wearing? Uh, yeah, he in the very beginning, he said he has this thing for caps. And I don't know why he has a full head of hair, great hair. I don't know what the cap thing is, but it actually uh, I don't know. I, 
I don't want to get into people's looks, so I'm just going to shut up. Maybe it's cultural. Parents are Russian, right? His parents or hers? No, be his. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Yep, it's coming. Yeah, I like them together so far. Um, I, you know, I, I think they're doing great. I think they're doing better than any of the other couples. You know, at the end of the day, their approach to the honeymoon has been better than any of the other couples. They do seem to be having fun. They do seem to be bonding. But I just don't know how deep of a bond they're building without having real conversations. But it's that weird balance, right? Because even though they've only known each other seven days, they don't necessarily need to figure out, you know, all of their history and dig deep and have all those emotions like Orion and Lauren are. But I feel like they they need to be somewhere in the middle. Like Lauren and Orion need to be tilting more towards what Becca and Austin are doing. And Becca and Austin need to tilt just a smidgen more towards the Lauren and Orion, just a smidgen, not all the way over there where they're, you know, digging into their, his, you know, their history and their, you know, their ethnic backgrounds and, you know, all the bad things that happened to them in life and all that childhood trauma and all that kind of stuff. But they do need to get a little deeper. Oh, Brendan is the one with the Russian parents. Spider, just this tiny little spider, but just like coming down right here. <laughs> That's <was> rude. <laughs> Okay, so Brendan is the one with the Russian parents. Thank you, DC. I like them together. Something seems to lurking to be lurking, or maybe it's the camera time. Yeah, um, they don't give them much camera time because they are boring. And see, that's the thing, though, right? You know, when the couples do get along, like this is how the experts and the show can't win with us, right? Because when the couples do get along, it's boring. Like we're just like watching them just talk. But when they um, so then we get mad because like this show's boring. But then when there's drama, like now if uh, you know, like if Lauren and Orion don't make it, then they leave the show. Then we're gonna be like, well, this is boring. Where's all the drama? So they can't win. I I do. <laughs> I admit to that. Do we think Becca will eventually snap due to her frustration with his inability to have difficult conversations? I don't know. I don't know if she'll snap, but I wonder if he'll finally give in because he they did kind of have a religious conversation, but I think she forced it on him. Right. She goes, yeah, I think we need to talk about a relig religion because, you know, I grew up Jewish and but now I'm agnostic. How about you? You know, so <laughs> she did kind of force him into that situation. <laughs> Let me show some more pictures here. Yeah, that was when they're at the beach. Um. Austin does not want to cone off, uh, come off as a bad guy on the honeymoon, but I think her medical condition thing may be what is bothering him as well as him not wanting to have in-depth conversations. Yeah, this is definitely, um, I think his medical condition, but as well as him not wanting to have in-depth. Yeah, I think he is, I don't think he, he is a bad guy. He does seem like he's a nice guy, but he also doesn't want to come off as a bad guy. He does seem like a nice guy. He doesn't seem as deep as everybody else with the, you know, like not as deep as uh, like the wordsmith that all these people are when it comes to their feelings, you know, and, you know, cause she asked him like, well, how will you show up for me? Um, and during our marriage and when we get back and he's just like, from, Oh, coming from Santa Clarita. Sorry. I just saw that. Okay. Santa Clarita. I'm Valencia. Um, Sorry, what was I saying? I totally cut myself off because I saw that my city was represented in the comments. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. Sorry, I don't remember what I was saying. Um, I surpri I'm surprised that they have not yet updated us on Michael. He and Chloe are the next couple. Yeah, I think that would be coming soon. I don't know what's, what's going on in the background there, but um, yeah, Michael will be showing up again in our screen soonish. Um, in my opinion, Becca is easygoing because she doesn't want to scare guys off due to her medical issues. At some point before decision day, both of them will have to make some hard decisions. A thousand percent. I definitely think that Becca feels like um, if someone is accepting her, she kind of needs to take what she can get, um, which I feel is a horrible way to approach life. And I may be, I, you know, I, I'm Stating that, like kind of overstating that, you know, but just really to make the point. Um, I don't think it's that cut and dry, but um, I think she's willing to overlook a lot of things that a lot of people wouldn't 
if the guy's going to accept her and all of her her flaws and um, medical situation. Why would him not liking something about her be a disappointment? Any of them can have a change of pace at any time. Um, why would him? Well, uh, not him not liking anything about her be a disappointment, but I have a feeling that it it would be something bigger into the to the fact where it could be like a deal breaker ish kind of thing. I just feel like there's something lurking because I mean, yeah, of course they're all gonna not like everything about one another, but I just feel like there's something about whether it's not her or her situation or something. I feel like that um, she's he's going to end up disappointing her on. I don't know what it is, but that's just a feeling I get. Not just not necessarily like, well, I don't like the way you do this in the morning when you're getting ready. I feel like there's something that uh, lurking in their future. And, I, and maybe I'm just making that up because I'm just used to these couples always having drama. Hmm. Once Lauren or Ryan leave, they'll, they will, that's what I'm thinking. They'll get, um, if uh, they say no on next week to, staying together, which I can't imagine them saying yes, because he just straight up said that he can't get past the situation at the hot tub. So where can they go from here? But divorce. Becca is more into Austin already. Yeah, that definitely feels that way. And I think he feels that as well, which is why I think he's kind of tiptoeing around what his feelings, because whenever they, you know, talk about their feelings for each other, like even when they're at the dinner table, um, she was you know, expressing herself. I can't remember all the things she was saying about how great he is, how great they're getting along, how they're saving the harder conversations for later. And this is this, and this is great. And he's just like, same. Hello? Like, he's just like, that's all you got for me? Like, yep, same. Like, so, <laughs> so I, I definitely feel like there's something going on there with Austin that he just doesn't want to express. Good night. I was in the same racial mix situation as Lauren and Orion. Okay. I was with him for 40 years. We never had the problems with our race and culture uh, that those two had in a week. Oh, interesting. So in 40 years, you never experienced what these two have experienced in like the first six days of their marriage, huh? So yeah, I think it's just him, you know, because he's what, 27. So I think it's a lot of that. And I don't know how old your... Um, you know, you all were when you got married, but I think there's a lot of immaturity that is playing into the Orion and Lauren situation as well. I feel like Becca doesn't give him space. She's always in his face. She's too, she's too much. And I think they don't need to talk about all these serious topics during the honeymoon. Yeah. She's definitely like, mm, she, from day one, remember on the wedding day, she was just like, kiss me, kiss me. Oh, there's oh, another reason for a kiss. So I'm wondering how much of that he would have the, how much of that he really is comfortable with, you know, because again, I don't think he's that guy to be to tell her like, I really don't, you know, like, you're great. No, I don't really want to kiss you right now, though. Or this is a little much for me. So, you know, eventually you have to be true to yourself. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I'm thinking, you know, like all these little things that um, that we are seeing are going to come to fruition in a way that may end up hurting her feelings. Hey, Mills. I'm so glad you caught the live too. Thanks for the love. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if they're done, done, but yeah, you know, just it's easy to basically just based on the history of this show and the numbers of this show to just basically say like, chances are they're not going to make it, you know, like because most of them don't. I agree. Something is lurking from um, the downplay to the guys and not wanting to have certain combos. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me about that part too. Like, yeah, the way it's almost like he, when he was talking to the guys, remember that guy, remember that when um, he was downplaying their relationship, like mm, it's fine. I wonder if he didn't want to lie to the guys um, about what was really going on in front of the camera anyway. And that's why, um, yeah, th that's another you know, clue that something may be going on because maybe he was afraid um, he wasn't downplaying it. He just didn't want to say it out loud yet where she could hear it and have it be repeated back to her. Having a chronic condition is very hard on your partner or spouse. They have to be your caretaker. Take her. I know I have a chronic back pain. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Maria, that you have chronic back pain. But and I think that's what Emily 
why Emily is overcompensating and overly joyed with Austin and maybe even maybe smothering him. I'm not sure, you know, I'm not there all the time, but I wonder if he might even be feeling so smothered by her um, because it's a lot, you know, like it's a lot to be on the show. It's a lot to learn that the person you were matched with has, you know, like a chronic situation. And then it's a lot for her to literally be in your face and kissing on you all the time. And then you got producers telling you where to go and you got to get up at five in the morning and you got to go over here and just come over here and tell me your feelings. Tell her your feelings. Talk to the group about your feelings. Now, now it's time for lunch. Now have lunch. In the so it's a lot to take in. And so I feel like he's processing all of this. But at the same time, like, do I really want this? I don't know. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I am, that something is lurking in the back. I remember seeing Michael in early uh, previews moving in with someone. Yeah, eventually they are going to match him, uh, Michael, with somebody. So stay tuned for that. That'll be interesting to see how that goes, because Michael seems quirky. Um, he seems like he's probably a nice guy, but he seems like he would have some quirky ways. So he could be entertaining at the very least. Oh, maybe that's why Austin Down plays it to the guys, too. Exactly. I think that might be why that um, he is downplaying it to the guys. That's where the show and the experts fail them in order to just have drama. They should coach them to take it easy on a honeymoon. Yeah, except for <clears throat> it's like almost the show isn't even set up for them to take it easy on the honeymoon because they're trying to get so much footage of them. They're schedules are busy because you know they have them wake up early in the morning they want to watch them brush their teeth together eat together go on their little excursion together they gotta do their confessional cams then they want to have the group dinner or a group lunch and then they go back and to their room and then they want to set up the cameras and have another conversation so even just the production schedule alone makes it difficult for these people to just like you know what i mean so I don't even know, you know, that's that's the hard part of this show and where, you know, I, you know, we should give the cast more grace because it's a lot. You know, it is very stressful to be on camera all the time. Um, I have some background in the entertainment industry, but not to this extent where just 24 um, seven for eight weeks. I did do something where it was like uh, it was like a weekend or something or three days um where we were on camera for maybe eight hours a day and that's draining because you are aware of what you're saying and you're trying to be articulate and you don't want to come across dumb and you want to seem nice and the camera will suck a lot of energy out of you so you want to be more hi yes i'm so happy to be here you know as opposed to like yeah i'm excited to be here um we're having a good time you know like really are you um so it, it's hard to be tired and be on camera and always just trying to think of your uh, what you're saying because you don't want to look like a fool, and you and they you don't want to give the editors anything that they can edit into making you look like an ugly person. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it is hard to do this show. I don't even know where that started. We'll take a couple more and then we'll start wrapping this up because I was only planning on being here for like an hour. I didn't want to drag it out too long. Lauren was set up to fail by being matched with Orion. He's not a good match for anyone. However, she is extremely, she is an extremely hard match. Nobody notices because of Orion's horrible behavior. Oh, that's interesting that you think she's a hard match. Huh. What do you think is a hard match about her? Is it that she uh, likes to press down her edges? Is it because of her bonnet? <laughs> I'm just kidding, DC. I know you got a deeper reason than that. DC is, um, it's good to listen. Uh, uh, if you ever in my comments section, he's a good one to read because he does get deep with it. He, uh, not that others aren't deep, but he can get really in analytical with um, why these people do what they do. And it's interesting to kind of hear, uh, you know, a deep uh, perspective like that. Uh, Marvina, I, I met my husband when I was 18. He was 23. So we were young and immature. I am sure, I'm sure, but never acted like Orion and Lauren, right? Yeah. Um, everybody's not immature the same way. <laughs> I'm sure I was way immature at uh, maybe 27. Well, I don't know if I was way immature, but um, I think uh, Orion needs uh, a lot of 
I don't want to say a lot of therapy, but I do feel like he needs a lot of, um, what's the words I'm looking for? See, now I'm acting like them, huh? trying to be all politically correct. I feel like he needs to just uh, work on healing a lot of the stuff from his past because I feel like he's bringing whatever he needs to work on into this relationship. You know, like even when he, he was talking about one of the reasons he can't forgive her is because um, when she was yelling at him. It reminded him of when he had to protect his sisters from his stepfather. Like now you're comparing her to a man. Like, but that sounds like that was a trigger for you and you need to work on that because she's not some man who was threatening, threatening you or your sister or your mom. So the fact that that's what you were feeling in that moment, I feel like you might need to work on that. And the same with the, you know, he mentioned that, you know, the only other time he was in that situation was the apple comment, you know, like when he was in school, somebody had called him an apple, you know, red on the outside, white on the outside, I mean, white on the inside. And then the other only time he had such like a, uh, a racial, a racist moment, as he put it, to that depth was the crude, as he looked at her, the crude joke from you. Um, so now, you know, again, I feel like he's equate, he's misappropriating things you know he's putting too much on her than um what he needs to actually go through therapy and work on those things we're back on orion again huh the producer should chill with trying to force drama especially on the honeymoon the drama and tension will come naturally when moving in together let them have a little fun before the storm begins i know right like can they just at least get a moment a moment but i think orion and um Lauren brought this particular drama on themselves and, and unless the producers were forcing them to have cultural conversations, but I think they really, I just can't think of a time when, even when they, during the wedding, I feel like they were having deep conversations. Like, I just can't think of a time that they were just chill. Oh, I heard, sorry, you were correct. So I thought he was, <laughs> I thought I'd click on that one. You are correct, Tamara. He needs therapy. Yeah. I think Orion needs some, needs some healing for sure. Um, I don't know what's going on with him, um, but I just hope he gets help. I thought there was, you know, I'm really disappointed because when they first uh, came onto the scene, I really thought that um, they were going to do better than what they are. Um, they really seemed like they were uh, potentially a good match. Um, they really seemed to be vibing with one another. And I never would have guessed that it would have gone so catastrophically wrong, so catastrophically soon. All right, I'm going to take one more and then I'm going to get ready to get ready, folks. Let's see. Uh, wait a minute. I'm pretty sure he was the one who said uh, the term, not her. She had never heard it before and asked what it meant. Then he tried to make a joke. It must mean his uh, skin color. Yeah, he definitely brought it up. Um, she had said that, you know, because she had asked him about the N-word. And then, um, you know, he said what he said about the N-word. And then so she had said, like, yeah, there were some times when I was younger or that I have said derogatory things, not knowing they're derogatory. And then he said, like, eh, skin. And then she's just like, oh, no, um, not that, because I don't even really know what that means. Oh, your face! You know, so um, he did bring it up first, the same way she brought up the N-word first. Um, but yeah, he brought it into the conversation. But that's again a conversation that she shouldn't have brought it up. The, 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 the N word. It's too soon, you know. Like if you want to, uh, it's nothing wrong with ha having that curiosity and wanting to know the answer. But can you, can, like, on day three, you know, <laughs> can you get a minute? <sighs> like, like I said, what about the chewing gum? Come, you know, like, what's your favorite? You like Trident? What, you know, what's your favorite gum? I don't see uh, what Lauren did was wrong. She didn't say the word. He did. She laughed when she looked at it. Oh, wait. Oh, we just talked about that. But yeah. Nah, Tamara, from the jump, I knew that Lauren and Ryan were mismatched before they met. Each really? I thought they were going to be good. I didn't think from the beginning they were, you know, like before they met. But I was surprised how much they were vibing after they met. But I really thought that they were going to be like a disaster um, after, you know, before they um, got married. But they were like really vibing like on the, the wedding day and, you know, like even like the day after and they seemed really happy. And it almost looked like they were, about you know, about to say the L word to one another until it went horribly wrong. 
trying to apply logic towards the behavior of an illogical person like Ryan. <laughs> we have to remember these people are all strangers to each other and are mics with cameras in your in your face all the time, 24 seven and still have to eat and use a toilet, etc. But nobody is romantic. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. And that was what I was explaining earlier that, um, you know, that this show is a hard show to do um, because you have cameras in your face. I don't know if you've ever been on camera before, but it is very, it can be intimidating to be on camera and it's, and it's not natural to have a conversation when someone says, okay, um, Nancy and Adrian, I'm just picking out names of people in the comments. We're going to sit you down over here. We're going to have dinner. And I want you guys to kind of talk about your feelings about how, um, your excursion went today. Go. You know what I mean? Like that's not natural. And so, yeah. So to, to be in that situation and then you're married to that person that they're forcing you to be in that. It's hard. It's a hard show. It's a hard show to cast. It's a hard show to be on. And that's, I think what makes it entertaining because all of these pieces are hard and it's just entertaining to see it's kind of like this train wreck. All right. Uh, seems impossible that Lauren hadn't heard the term before. Maybe she meant she didn't understand why they were called that. Did she say she hadn't heard it before or she'd never used it? Cause she didn't know what it meant. I don't remember. She said that she'd never heard it before. Maybe I said that and I must misspoke, but I think she said that, um, that she didn't know what it meant. Oh, you're so welcome, Diana. All right. DC, you have the last say, and then we're going to say good night. Lauren was trying to keep Orion happy. That's why they didn't have friction up front. The more burn she took, the more, yes, a hundred percent. Yes, because she kept get, giving grace. He kept just like stabbing and she's like, ah, okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. You know, it's just a, it's just a flesh wound. And then he like pull her hair. Oh, that's okay. Okay. That's a weave anyway. I didn't need that hair. That's okay. That's okay. Pop her in the face. Oh, all right. I didn't need that cheek. My tooth, my truth. All right. I got more teeth. Yeah. And so finally she um, lost it and it was just like, I can't take it. Take the ring. Take your marriage. I'm done. And that's what happens when you hold it in. I think she just exploded in the end when she was just like, I want a divorce. Um, and I really think she meant that um, in the moment anyway. I don't know if she would want to stay together with him. But anyway, thank you guys so much for coming out here. Let me know what you guys think like in the comments about this. Um, why am I? I hate when people do that too, when they start fixing their hair because they see themselves in the thing. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about this format um, of me kind of doing this every once in a while or more often. Um, I love hopping in here and having a conversation with you guys. So let me know if you kind of prefer this over the videos or you want a little mixture of both because I'm here to serve it up for you all. Thank you all so much, Marvina, Jules, AC Engineer, Mary, Tea Time, um, DC, Relax, Library, Adrian. Thank you all so much for participating and for joining me live and for all of you that are watching on the, the re, what do you call it, when you're watching it later. Thank you for tuning in. And that, well, what, how do I always end it? Well, that's all I have for now. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see See you in my next video.